Welcome to Field Sports Britain, coming to you today from Spain. Coming up, we're having falconry and ferreting fun near Bristol, teaching kids about field sports. First, thinking of a new shoot vehicle, we're on a Paris Dakar rally driver test track, pushing gamekeeper mobiles to their limits. Las Comes is quite a venue. An hour north of Barcelona, it's owned by Spain's equivalent of Bernie Eccleston, Pep Villa. The slopes, water hazards and tough terrain are all designed to test a vehicle's off-road ability. The site has been designed to put competition rally cars and bikes through their paces. Day to day, Las Comes offers the Land Rover experience and JCB has chosen it to host the launch of its new Workmax. This UTV is entering a very competitive market split between the likes of the John Deere Gator, the Kawasaki Mule and the Kubota range. JCB's 800cc side-by-side -side is here to be given a hard time by dealers from all over Europe. They've been invited to test and, JCB hopes, place orders for work maxes. They need to be convinced that for gamekeepers, farmers and shooters, the Workmax is an essential piece of kit. JCB is so confident with its product, it has brought along the competition too. But we want to make our own comparisons. Unfortunately, there's a faller at the first. The Kawasaki has got starter motor problems. It's going to take four days to get a new one and it has to retire to the costas while we play with the others. So we've received a series of challenges from the producers. Now where have I heard that before as a programme idea? We have to deliver just short of a tonne of kit from a point on the estate there to another point that's about 30 feet away here and 30 feet higher. OK, so not quite a tonne, but we do have some ballast and a shrub. Testing each of the vehicles will be Moy. He is a professional rally driver and co-pilot to Pep Villar when he is competing with his 10-ton, 1,000 brake horsepower truck capable of 120 miles an hour. They've just completed the latest Dakar rally and are world-class competitors. Well, what is it like to cross the desert at 90 miles an hour? Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's an experience and it's, yeah, it's fun. fun. And it's a great adventure and also a lot of learning for I mean for the for the job that I'm I'm doing is also it's an always learning time. It seems incredible that a lorry can be so fast, but uh, on the stages between cars and lorry, this year some of the stages the first lorry was fifth on the overall with the cars, and we finished it several times between in the, in the in the top ten. Why is here a good place to train? Uh, here since. Uh, 2009, September 2009, we started with the Land Rover Experience Center. It's, uh, you know, that those centers are fran uh, s several franchises around the world. We have lots in the UK. Yeah, you have, uh, I think, nine in the UK. We don't have quite so many with chickens in them, of course. <laughs> you seem to have more chickens in your Land Rover Experience than we do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably in, in Wales they have more sheep than, yep. than, than chickens here. <laughs> Got to get the Welsh sheep joke in, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Okay, so you started that uh, what two years ago? Yeah. And uh, and and you also have this test facility, as we discover, for eight for ATVs and RTVs. And things yeah, things. this is a. I mean, the whole estate it suits very well with every single off-road product. Let's let's say a lot a lots of teams are coming to the to the to the this center also to to test and to test for the for the Dakar Rally before starting the the rally in in, in January. And yeah, it has fast, fast tracks, uh, very, very extreme, uh, slow, uh, slow tracks, winch tracks, recovery tracks, every different sort of different tracks and terrain. That it's, it's, it's very, it's very good. It's very good to, to, to show the products. From the monster trucks, we're back with the UTVs. They may have a fraction of the power, but they can get you to some places that other vehicles fear to tread. We start with the Gator and Moy is concerned about the lack of engine braking power. The Kubota is better, but Moy is worried about ground clearance and getting up the hills. Lastly, it's the Workmax, and Moy seems happier with traction and balance. Now for our next challenge, oh dear, one of the Range Rovers 
has got stuck. What shall we do? OK, so they wouldn't let us use a Range Rover, but they're quite happy for us to submerge one of the defenders. I also have to add that the Gator had gone the way of the Kawasaki. A punctured tyre meant it had to limp home, and I promise you there was no funny business, just tough terrain. Anyway, back to the tug of war, and first up is the Kubota. Everyone is pretty confident the little machine will do the business, and it does the job without any trouble. The chaps at JCB are so confident with their bit of kit, they want to make life even more difficult for the Workmax and try to do this stunt in reverse and in high ratio. Not easy, but it does it all the same. Challenge number three. It's high noon, but instead of revolvers, we got beer. Not just beer, but Mad Dogs and Englishman beer which has been out in the midday sun soaking up the rays next to a fire. We're strapping a can of Spain's finest to the back of each of the vehicles. Thankfully, the Gator is rejoining us at the bar. We want to see which of the three has the best suspension and therefore the smoothest ride. We head off in convoy, uphill and down dale, trying to upset our ale. With the Barcelona beer bounce complete, it's time to draw your weapons. Just so we know who's carrying what, let's hear it, boys. Workmax. John Deere. Kubota. Time to pull that ring and face the fizz. Hardly a fountain of froth, but if nothing else, enough to show that lager is best served chilled. So, having seen the results, what does Moy, our rally driving expert, think of the lineup? We've got a very impressive lineup of, uh, of RTVs, UTVs, what, whatever you want to call them. Um, first of all, uh, this one, the K Kubota RTV. What do you what do you like about it? Kubota, well, it has good good thing on the Kubota is the is the engine brake, but and also the selection that you, that you can select uh, high, medium, and, and low gear. But it's it's slow. The ground clearance is awful, and the handling is not is not is not very good. Would you and cross? Would you cross the Atlas Mountains with it on the Paris Dakar? No way, no, no way, and, and it's ugly. That's yeah. another thing. Okay, this one, this one, what, what is this one? This the, is the Gator, isn't it? The John Deere, it? the Gator. This is built in America by Americans. Built in America by Americans, and to to be working just in a flat terrain like a golf course or something like this, because it doesn't <laughs> cope with the with the rough terrain. Okay. It's good, no ground clearance. The handling is awful, and the steering car. Uh, I really don't like it. Not so much. Okay, JCB. JCB. It's for me. It's the the, the most balanced one. I mean, it can work in flat terrain, muddy areas, rough terrain, big estates like like uh, like ours here, and it has a very good response on the engine. Also, quite good good uh, engine brake, and good steering, very very good steering and handling. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, and finally the Kawasaki. Oh, the Kawasaki. Uh, mainly, it didn't work. It didn't work, did it? No. no. <laughs> well, let's leave the Kawasaki. There's no point launching a product like the Workmax if the dealers don't like it. As with anything, they have to have confidence, especially as many of the guys here will be offering more than one manufacturer in their showrooms. So having had their fun in the sun, what do they make of JCB's new baby? There's a variety of vehicles out here for you to test. Mm. Uh, you've given them a go this morning? Yes, and I have in the past also, but yeah, I have done. So have you come here prejudiced? Um, no, not really. Quite, quite open-minded, really, because I think the last, what is now called the Workmax, the, the thousand, um, maybe wasn't as refined as this one, and um, uh, there were the, the others were probably a little closer than in ability. So is JCB trying to get away from its past here? Really? No, I don't think getting away from its past. I think just improving on what they've started to build, and they came into the market with. Um, you know, into a market that was already there and tried to compete with it, and it, it's just a learning curve. And are you happy with the model? I think it's. I really do think it's a fantastic little little um, utility vehicle. It it um, it's able to do things as we we saw out there that was was um, quite remarkable, really, compared to the others. Have you have you come across gamekeepers who've made a conscious decision between a, an ATV, a quad bike, and uh, a UTV a, a, like this? Yes, they have. I mean, the the thing is now with uh, with quad bikes, the the amount that they're getting stolen from farms, uh, they are a lot uh, they're a lot easier to steal than the UTV. So the UTV offers not only a, a more secure vehicle, um, it's it's also a road can be set up to be road legal on the road, travel at about you know 50k. 
Um, you can carry the weights, you can tow the trailers, you've got everything. And also it keeps you dry when the weather's bad. Have you ever heard yourself saying to somebody, you could do the shopping and pick up the kids from storing this? Never have. <laughs> yeah. could that or go to church. <laughs> yes, they could. There's no reason at all why you couldn't, if you get one that's type approved for the road, that you couldn't use it on the road to go and fetch your kids from school. As long as obviously they're wearing a seatbelt. So, yeah. <laughs> JCB thinks that the Workmax is the next big thing for shooting estates. And there are going to be plenty of add-ons to play with that'll make life easier and probably a bit more fun too. Any groups of your friends and your family? <laughs> it's half term for most children this week and up and down the country good parents who will go to heaven are trying to find ways to entice their little darlings outdoors and into the countryside well here's one way to tear them away from call of duty black ops ferreting it's guaranteed to work wonders Here's the Pied Piper from the Wood Spring Pigeon Shooting and Wildfowling Club in North Somerset who organised just such a day. Well, we all split up into teams. Uh, yeah, team Falcon, Team Hawk, uh, Team Kestrel and uh, the Mighty Wood Spring Warriors. And uh, basically we all took the kids ferret and we split up. We had some really experienced ferret handlers, two in each team, plus all the parents with the kids. Well, basically 95% of the kids no field sports experience at all. You know, you know, there was probably 5% had, but the rest of them, no experience at all. And, uh, yeah, they now come from further afield, and they've all come in, joined in, and, and uh, we took them ferreting hands-on. And uh, they thoroughly enjoyed it. The teams make their different ways into the woods and get to grips with the intricacies of netting the rabbit holes. Mike, will show you how to do it now. No, baby bunny, says. Yeah. I don't get it. Probably like that. Yeah, you got the two rings? You remember the two rings? Everyone keeps still, but this warren is definitely barren. OK, let's move on further down the wood and try again. Right? Eventually success and everyone gathers round. But it is only a baby rabbit, and for the sake of the small children present, it is set free. It's too small. Yeah. Deeper in the wood, another team is clearly having more success. However, one of the ferrets is missing deep below ground and shows no sign of coming to the surface. Joe Williams has driven down from the Lake District for this day with his father and his brother. He explains. Uh, we got three, rab three reasonably sized rabbits uh, in two sets of holes. The ferrets get got uh, a kill down the hole so we had to dig them out. It'll stay with the kill until it's had a big meal and or until there's nothing left of the rabbit. Yeah. Yeah. Just want to get as possible. Ah, that's it. 
A lot of digging, a broken spade, and eventually the missing ferret is reunited with daylight. From fur to feather, and Rob Collins's gang lays on an afternoon of junior field sports activities. The falconry display is on standby to catch the rabbits bolted by the ferrets. But with such a large crowd present, that's a triumph of hope over experience. <laughs> and this Harris hawk has taken to a nearby pylon for a better view. The ferrets stay underground. So do the rabbits. The children are also able to try lots of activities ranging from air guns to archery and all in a good cause. It's uh, Children's Hospice South West, it's for terminally ill kids, you know, and it's just basically, you know, making their last days as comfortable and as happy, you know, you, there is no right word to describe it really, you know. Uh, I was only up there last week picking the stuff up and I saw one girl and she was just walking, just being helped in and she just smiled at me, my heart, you know. The day introduces fresh faces to field sports and raises £400 for Children's Hospice Southwest. If you want to find out more about this day, search for Woodspring on Facebook. Now, from Somerset, it's off to Lincolnshire to meet up with the new Chief Executive of the Countryside Alliance, Alice Barnard. Point-to-point -point racing and the hunt are, of course, inextricably linked. We join Alice Barnard, the new Chief Executive of the Countryside Alliance at North Carlton in Lincolnshire, to talk about the importance of point-to-point -point racing and to find out the major issues that will be having an impact on members this year. Trying to get back a re-challenge in second, but exit the run. That's to be calling all the shots at the moment as they face up to the 20th of final press. Exit the run with a couple of lift readers again. Johnson went on the run to the line, Richard Arts of competing. Very comfortable here as they go to finish. Exit the run. From Yang, Harry Hayes, Point Harry to point Hayes. point things, these horses that have hunted during the season come out and run over these fences. I mean, that is the point. All these horses here have had to qualify. Therefore, their owners, their trainers, their jockeys have shown support of hunting by getting their horses out hunting, spinning them around the, the local countryside, gaining their certificate, and then running them somewhere like here today. And this is a beautiful course with great ground. The stewards have done, and the clerk of the course have done a great job here today, and a great opportunity for people to show their solidarity. Well, every single point to point is run by a hunt, and in fact, some hunts have several point to points. So these are absolutely integrated with the local hunt. They organise them, all the volunteers are hunting people. This whole event could not be put on without the hunt and uh, their support network. So absolutely, it's critical to this sport. And it's that support of the hunting fraternity that's so important in repealing the ban. Well, repeal is absolutely at the heart of the Countryside Alliance's agenda. Um, it's incredibly important we keep the pressure up um, on MPs so that they understand why it's so important we repeal the Hunting Act. Because after all, this is about a bad law. It's a bad piece of legislation that needs addressing and it needs repealing. Of course, we're spending a lot of time lobbying MPs right the way across the House of Commons, but what we need is your support. So if you go onto the Countryside Alliance website, click on the Tony Blair postcard, it only takes a couple of seconds to fill it in. You can lobby your MP, tell him or her why it's so important we achieve repeal.
With the prospect of a revision of gun ownership laws always round the corner, how does Alice feel the Countryside Alliance can support the shooter? Well, it's essential that the Countryside Alliance continues to have a robust stance on this point. Uh, what we're very keen to see is that any government agenda on this is actually related to direct evidence of what the issues really are. For example, they started talking about uh, raising the age of uh, that young shots are able to acquire licences. That is not part of the agenda post the tragedies in Cumbria. The, the idea that somehow preventing young people, young responsible people handling and using guns in the correct and appropriate manner will stop a tragedy like, as we saw in Cumbria this year is absolutely incorrect and wrong. And it's essential that we start to look at this in perspective. The young people in the countryside who enjoy their shooting and get out there at the weekends with their dads, their uncles, whoever it is, are doing so in an environment where they learn and understand the responsibility of gun ownership. Away from the high-profile campaigns that will be battled out during the coming year, there is the interest in local food and food miles and how this might affect the rural community. Well, I think it's really important that people have the opportunity to support their local farmers, their local shops, the local businesses in their community. I think people are very keen to make sure that the food they eat is of a high quality and therefore has high welfare standards. And I don't think anyone would argue that British farmers have the very best standards throughout the world. And this is an opportunity to show their support by buying local, which I think is incredibly important. And the Countryside Alliance Awards, which are now in their sixth year, I think really show this support and really cement the community's belief that these people are real local heroes. And I think it's an opportunity for us to be able to shout about all the good things that go on in the countryside. The charitable arm of the Countryside Alliance, the Countryside Alliance Foundation, is also supporting the drive for local food interest. Alice explains. The Countryside Alliance Foundation runs an incredibly successful project, uh, Game to Eat, which has been running um, for many years now and has managed to, to garner support for, for eating game uh, by 90% over that period. It's really exciting to see people trying new food, you know, whether that's partridge or pheasant or venison. People are really engaging in this. It's an opportunity to eat free-range meat. They know um, where it's come from, they know it's local, and more importantly, it has no food miles and they know it led a free-range life. What could be more important so it's a great opportunity once again to support your local community. With many more point-to-point -point meetings to come this season the Countryside Alliance is encouraging members and Hunt supporters to come along. Uh, the Countryside Alliance supports point-to-pointing right the way across the country both by attending them and indeed running our own point-to-points. We have one in Dorset coming up on the 27th of February which everyone is welcome to come along and enjoy. It's about being involved in the countryside, getting involved, volunteering and having a great day out. Well, we're back next week with Pigeons and the Countryside Alliance. This has been Field Sports Britain. Olay.